My name is Josh Herring. I'm a humanities instructor. I'm a debate coach and dean of students for Thales Academy Rollsville. And in this presentation, I'm going to go over uh, the Thales Academy 612 program. Uh, I've been teaching with Thales for seven years now, and I'm very excited to get to share with you part of uh, this exciting program. Uh, now, before we get going, just in case there's anyone here who's not currently uh, part of the Thales orbit, do take a look at the picture on this slide. Uh, that's a standard Thales building. Uh, all of our buildings are pretty similar to each other. You'll notice the red brick and the uh, columns at the front. Uh, you can know, you'll know a Thales Academy building by this architecture uh, if you happen to drive by one. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's talk about what exactly Thales Academy is. Thales Academy is a, we're a growing network of pre-K through 12 uh, independent schools. We are primarily based around the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Uh, we do have a campus in Waxhaw near Charlotte, and we're opening two new campuses this coming summer, one in Glen Allen, Virginia, and one in Franklin, Tennessee. We currently serve over 3,000 students uh, beginning at pre-K and going all the way through 12th grade. We were founded in 2007, uh, and the primary goal uh, the, for which we were founded was to provide a better educational option for families. Our founder, uh, Bob Luddy, uh, encountered several parents who were frustrated with the public school options in our area and could not afford the private school options. And he realized that there was a market for quality, affordable education, and that really became the hallmark uh, of the drive that led to Thales Academy. So to this day, that quality... <coughs> affordable education is a huge piece of what we do. So it's our goal as a school to provide the highest quality education at the most affordable price for families. Uh, it's our, we want to give a well-rounded education to help students develop to their highest potential. And before I go any further, let me just encourage anybody as you are listening, if you have a question, please do put that in the chat. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to those at the end of our time, or at the end of the presentation, and address your questions. Uh, so at Thales Academy, a huge part of what we're doing is a rigorous academic program, but we pair that rigorous academic program with character training, real world skills, and a goal of helping students be ready for wherever they go from our campus, whether that's college or to into a career field. Uh, Julian Simon once wrote that the ultimate resource is the human mind, and we take that idea very seriously at Thales Academy. We believe that uh, the cultivating the human mind is the greatest thing that students can do to set themselves up for a great future. That's really uh, everything we are about. So uh, we, as I mentioned, have a huge emphasis on quality. Uh, we're looking for high, uh, high quality, affordable cost education. And we do that through a variety of ways you see listed here on the slide. I'll address several of these throughout this presentation. Uh, but we use a classical curriculum in our 612 program. And throughout that curriculum, we've integrated character formation and non-cognitive skills, as well as technical skills. One of the other pieces that sets us apart from other private schools is an innovative management system. By that I mean we have a very streamlined uh, administrative staff that lets us pass those savings on to our families. We focus a lot on execution. Uh, it's, a, <coughs> it's a huge part of our program that we have a blend of classical theory, and, but we also are always focusing on how do we execute that well. Uh, we're looking to provide the best educational experience for our families. So uh, with that, oh, I'm sorry, I think I skipped an important slide there. Let me back up. Uh, so we have several campuses. Uh, there, You see their locations there on the side. Uh, and we've got two different models for how we handle junior high and high school education. The Apex and Rollsville campuses are on our 612 model, where those are those campuses are focused on middle school and high school, but the Nightdale, Raleigh, and Waxhaw campuses are focused on our pre-K and kindergarten through eighth grade, where those campuses are building a middle school program and they'll eventually feed to a high school program or high school campus. Now, our 612 model is quite unique, and we have a lot of different pieces that I want to share with you. So, in the remainder of this presentation, I want to kind of walk you through some of the highlights of our curriculum, uh, exactly what do we do with character education as a school, and then some of the things that make us really unique. Our emphasis on STEM education, our technology uh, uh, incorporation, uh, and then the results of our program. We'll also touch on some of the student life emphases uh, that come in, and then we'll kind of wrap all of this up and get to your questions. So uh, let's begin that with a focus on our curriculum. So 
Uh, our junior high high school model of education is based on the uh, pieces that are begun in our K-5 program. Our K-5 program makes a great use of direct instruction to give students lots and lots of information. Students learn a ton in the, at the junior high and high school levels. We then incorporate those to uh, de and pair them with a classical education and the Socratic method of teaching. Our goal in using those two tools is to develop the whole student and to help them develop into their fullest potential possible. We believe that this is the best way to help students succeed in college, in career, and life. So, uh, for a few moments, I want to share with you what those two pieces are, our classical education and the Socratic method of teaching. So, <coughs> classical education is a uh, particular way of doing education. Uh, in one sense, it's it's a very time-honored tradition of doing education. It's the it was at one point the main way that schools handled how they did teaching uh, throughout the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Every school used a version of classical education. In the 20th century. Uh, American uh, public education moved away from classical education as their model. And it's our contention as a school that classical education is the best way to help students grow into their potential. So we want to bring classical education back. Uh, and that's one of the main pieces of our 612 program. So as you see on the slide, classical education is a systematic, rigorous program that provides a depth and breadth of knowledge in chronological order. So all of those pieces are pretty are they're pretty significant, but we're we're wanting to help students learn things in a systematic way rather than sort of a hodgepodge of knowledge. We think that knowledge is best done systematically. Students learn things in order. It's also important that they learn in in an academically rigorous way. Uh, so they finish our program having learned an enormous amount of subjects and that they are well versed in those different subjects. Along the way, then. They develop excellent critical thinking skills and reasoning skills. We use the language frequently of the fact we're not trying to teach students what to think, but rather how to think. And we do that through the three main stages of classical education. In our K-5 program, students are in the grammar stage where they are at, at the point in life when they are wanting the most knowledge. Uh, students who are very young have an immense curiosity. They want to know what things are called. They want to know how things work. And we want to use that natural process, that natural stage of life to our advantage. So rather, so at that point, we give them lots and lots of data and they're primarily observing and memorizing information. But then we get to the logic stage in our junior high program, where now as students are entering <coughs> uh, early, they're entering early teenage years, they want to discover why certain things are true. How does it work and why does it work that way? Why are these things the way they are? Well, we want to use that again to our advantage. That's the natural progression of a student's mind. And in that logic phase, we're focusing on how to think and, and what are the best ways to analyze things. All of that builds to the rhetoric stage, where when students enter our high school program, uh, they now have the ability to study particular areas and to come to a solid foundation and be able to speak intelligently about those different areas in life. Now, I just presented those as if those three things are all separate spheres. But in reality, we're always using all three at the same time. When we enter a new area of knowledge, we're learning the vocabulary of that subject. And then we're, in, we're integrating that together and interrogating the different knowledges that we've learned. And once we finish that, we're prepared to speak well about that different, those different areas of knowledge. This is the classical approach to education, and it pairs really well with the natural development of the student's mind. Now, we then pair that classical approach, and I'll, I'll go through a bit more detail in a moment when we look at the curriculum map, but we pair that classical approach with the Socratic method, where the Socratic method is all about students gathering together in a group and discussing uh, a series of questions. It's a guided conversation. And it works something like this, where a teacher might assign a short text, maybe one or two uh, pages in length. The students will read that text, and then they'll come together to have a guided conversation where the instructor poses questions and students then discuss that text together. As they do that, they're cultivating a few different skills. 
First off, they're reading closely and they're having to listen to each other. They're then discussing that together and they're disagreeing with each other politely. They're proving their observations through uh, pointing back to the text. What that does is it allows students and their interest uh, as they're maturing in age and in wisdom, it allows them to drive their own learning and their own education in a way. Uh, so we find that that fosters critical thinking. It develops public speaking skills, self-confidence. It also helps them grow in truth seeking. So by pairing these two things together, uh, we help students to develop their potential to the highest degree. So. That's sort of our theory. As I mentioned earlier, we're not just interested in theory. We're also very much focused on the execution of that theory. So what do students actually study? What is the content of a classical education? Well, you see on this slide, uh, this, this is the, our 6th six through 8th grade program laid out in detail. In, uh, <coughs> uh, in history, they're studying ancient and classical history in 6th grade. They build to European history in 7th grade, and then they focus on American history in 8th grade. In literature, their, their literature is selected and it, pair, it parallels their historical studies, such that as they are learning what actually happened, they're also studying how people thought about themselves and their societies in those different times. In math, they're studying the same kinds of standard mathematics they would anywhere, uh, but with an additional focus on uh, learning how that those structures and orders help them, the structured ordered thought helps them better understand the world. Now, we, we set our mathematics program up in such a way that students can test into a low, middle, or high placement based on their skill level. So in the sixth grade, they could test in there. That begins at grade seven, six Saxon is our low placement level. Uh, that's the on grade level section. Middle is Saxon eight, seven, and our high achieving students can test into pre-algebra and begin that in sixth grade. That allows them to begin a trajectory that lets them finish AP Calculus BC by 12th grade if they continue in that uh, highest placement setting. For science, they're studying earth science and life science, physical science. Our trivium section of the curriculum is where we place our uh, focus on written and verbal communication. And so in 6th sixth and, sixth and 7th grade, there's a big focus on grammar. And then beginning in 7th grade and continuing into 8th grade, there's an increasing focus on logic. So that students by 8th grade are prepared to spend a whole year studying formal logic. In, uh, and for language in junior high, they study Latin for across grades 6, 7, and 8. Uh, that We believe that that study of Latin equips them to learn the skills that are required to study any language. And we'll come back to that a little bit more uh, in a few moments. Now, in uh, <coughs> middle school, they also, uh, they also have a section of PE, health, and digital citizenship that uh, helps them become the best people that they can be in community. And we also have several other electives that I'll address uh, later on in, the, uh, in this presentation. Now, those same trajectories, those same tracks in our curriculum continue in high school. They still, t across grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, each year they study history, literature, math, science, and then trivium and language. Uh, they take these core classes that enable them to better understand the world, and so that by the time they have finished, uh, by the time they arrive in 12th grade, students have studied these subjects for seven years, and they've, they're able to bring those subjects all together to synthesize them so that they have a robust understanding of where the world is today. Beginning in ninth grade, they start back at the ancient Near East and the Greek world. In 10th grade, they study the saga of ancient Rome and the Middle Ages. 11th grade history begins at the Renaissance and continues up through post-World War II world. And then in 12th grade, they're learning the saga of American history. Their literature, again, parallels the history. Math continues, beginning with Algebra 1, uh, and continuing on to statistics if students uh, are in that, uh, depending on what placement level they are in. Uh, our sciences run through earth science, biology, chemistry, and physics with option for AP physics. Trivium uh, track in high school goes research and writing, and then 10th grade is formal logic. And then 11th grade, they study philosophy and ethics, culminating in 12th grade in the senior seminar course where they write the senior thesis. Now, in terms of their language, students get a choice at the beginning of high school. They could choose to continue on with Latin, in which case they can go all the way through AP Latin or Honors Latin 5, or they can decide they're done with Latin, they want to begin Spanish. And they could study Spanish, beginning at Spanish 1, continuing on through Spanish 4 or AP Spanish Literature, depending on uh, their prior studies. 
Uh, students also have the opportunity to take different electives throughout the day, uh, including our Luddy Institute of Technology that I'll explain a bit more of in just a few moments. Now, our curriculum is intense. Uh, it's a great curriculum, uh, and, but it's not an easy curriculum. It requires a lot of study, uh, and it, we stress to students that their primary obligation as students is to study and learn a lot. We believe that all of these subjects are necessary for students to thrive in uh, thrive after high school. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, students do have the choices of taking electives. Each year, students can take up to two electives. Uh, in junior high, we have certain we have uh, fewer electives. We have more choices in high school, uh, but some of those are available in both places, so that students can continue developing. Our electives tend to fall into two different categories. They're either skill-based electives like performing arts, band, chorus, art, and so on, or they're different content-based electives where students can really go beyond the curriculum in a particular area, where themes in young adult literature may come in, or in high school if they want to take economics or entrepreneurship or forensic science uh, or speech and debate or AP psychology uh, or things like, or classes like Female Voices of Western Literature or Shakespeare in the Western Tradition, Learn to Lead or College Preparation. Uh, there's lots of choices that students can make uh, and so that what the electives do is allow students to bring their choices, bring their interests into the school day and hopefully that then they can find success in doing that. So <coughs> our curriculum uh, is, uh, it, it's a great curriculum, uh, but it, it, it allows students to study to a high degree and also to find a great deal of success in doing so. Now, our goal as a school is primarily we do want students to study quite a lot. That, that, that's a high priority, but it's not the highest priority for us as a school. Our highest priority as a school is character formation. Uh, we want students to be strong students, but we believe it is not enough for students to have great grades and to go on and have strong careers that make lots of money. Those things are not enough. What students need to complete that is a strong character. So the goal of Thales Academy is that we would graduate students who exemplify our top 15 outcomes. And these top 15 outcomes are integrated into every class. Every teacher must uh, align all units with at least one of these outcomes. The poster on the slide is uh, hanging in every uh, 612 classroom so that teachers can point back to these and remind students continuously, these are the goals. The goal is not to make millions of dollars someday. The goal is to be a person of unfailing integrity. The goal is to be a virtuous leader. The goal is to cultivate self-reliance and truth-seeking and critical thinking within each student so that they exemplify the goals of continual learning. Uh, they need competent technical skills so that they can be astute problem solvers and so on. These 15 goals are what we hope all of our students exemplify. But our top goal, of course, is unfailing integrity. It's our goal as a school to help students realize that they need integrity if they want to have good lives. Now, additionally, as part of that character formation, we want students to get outside of the school. Uh, we do a lot in our buildings, but we also want students to be involved in their communities. So as part of that, we require students to volunteer 100 hours of community service before they graduate. We encourage students to do those at 25 hours per year, and we help them find those opportunities along the way. Now, <clears throat> as I mentioned, our, one of our primary focuses is on academic skills, but we also recognize that academic skills are not everything. Uh, there are a whole bunch of non-cognitive skills that are vital. Being a person of integrity is a non-cognitive skill. It's very difficult to measure. It's very difficult to prove that someone has that. And yet it's vital for success in life. Uh, we believe that we need more than just academics for real world preparation. Students need to know how to work together in teams. They need to know how to fulfill their obligations. They need time management. They need to be alert to what truly matters in life. Uh, so our goal as a school is to cultivate the cognitive skills that lead to long-term success, but also the non-cognitive skills that are vital for, for a happy life. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are several things that make our school unique. Uh, one of those is our focus on STEM and technology. A classical education lends itself to a large focus on the past. 
But we work very hard as a school to make sure that we are focusing on the relevant skills necessary for success in the 21st century. So as part of that, we always have an eye towards what are the current workforce skills that we can help our students cultivate so that when they leave Thales, they are ready to go into the academy or ready to go into the workforce. As part of that, we have a large technology focus as a school. Uh, we have a one-to-one -one iPad initiative where every student grade 612 has an iPad and uh, every classroom has a large TV that is equipped with Apple TV so that everyone can use those skills and be ready for those, uh, those components of the modern workforce. Each of our, uh, our two 612 campuses have uh, Mac computer labs that you see on the screen next to me. We also have rigorous math and science coursework to prepare students for the best uh, possible, uh, in the best possible ways. Now, one of our other uniquenesses as a campus or as a school <coughs> is the Luddy Institute of Technology. Several years ago, our founder, Bob Luddy, realized that there was a shortage of engineers in the workforce who had both a broad education that would allow for innovative thinking and also strong character education. So as he was taking his own entrepreneurial efforts and starting a school, he wanted to incorporate the Luddy Institute of Technology. And several years later, we've worked out the, uh, the process of developing the Luddy Institute of Technology into a pre-engineering elective program at both of our 612 campuses. And that is going to be a, uh, that's a hallmark of our program where students who are inclined towards engineering in ninth grade, they can begin taking LIT1. And there they learn the fundamentals of engineering, they learn the design process, they learn to work a variety of different tools, and they then are able to figure out what kind of engineering they enjoy. Across grades 10 and 11 in the LIT, LIT 2 and 3, uh, they then begin working with uh, CAD SOLIDWORKS, culminating in a certification uh, in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and then by the time they're seniors in the LIT program, students then develop a capstone project that requires them to solve a real engineering problem. This allows our LIT students to have gone through a variety of pieces that prepare them for advanced engineering studies in college. To this day, we've had several students who've now gone on to, they're in, they're in engineering programs at NC State at, and at UNC Charlotte. Uh, and they've, they've come back with multiple testimonials of how their time in the LIT program prepared them for success uh, in their current endeavors. Another piece that makes us unique as a school is our senior thesis and defense process. We require students to study a lot of different subjects. And by the time they're seniors, we then ask them to take their interest and develop a thesis. What that looks like is that in the uh, first quarter of their senior year, all seniors develop a senior thesis question that they want to answer, and they work with the senior trivium instructor and a faculty advisor to answer that question by researching the topic area and developing their answer, writing a 15 to 25 page paper that then goes through extensive revisions, culminating in the presentation of their thesis before a faculty council. Uh, on this slide, you see one of our seniors from Thales Apex a couple years ago presenting his thesis to a faculty panel. Uh, he then had to field whatever questions the faculty panel wanted to ask. What we found is that this process helps students bring all of their academic skills to bear, and it forces them to cultivate the skills of oral uh, articulation and defense such that when they go on from having completed this process, they find that their freshman year of college is less intense than their senior year at a Thales Academy high school program. Okay. I, I hope that all sounded great. Uh, I, I can almost hear the, the parent question in the back. All right, that's all wonderful. What are the results? How does it work? Well, let me show you three different aspects of our results. Um, uh, the first of those is with our K-8 programs. Every year, our, K th our kindergarten through eighth grade students take the Iowa Test of Basic Skills. And every year, we find that compared to their counterparts nationwide, our students are in the top percentiles, 97th through 99th percentile on that nationwide standardized test. Then beginning in with eighth grade also takes the PSAT and that goes up through 11th grade and our seniors take the SAT. Our students regularly test well above average on those national tests. Now those national tests are one thing. The true test of our program though is college. Where do our students go after their time here at Thales Academy? 
We are a college preparatory school. Uh, we have a rigorous college advising program that helps students navigate the process of college admissions. And over the last four years, we've had four graduating classes that literally go on to schools all over the country. Uh, and uh, so far, we found that students are able to go where they want to go from Thales Academy. You see the schools on this slide. Do also note that the class of 2019 also received over $2 million in scholarships. What we're doing is both philosophically and educationally sound, and we have the results to back it up. Our students go from Thales Academy to literate places all over the country. Now, I should also mention uh, can't, uh, should also mention the strength of our faculty. Uh, each Thales Academy faculty is incredibly strong. At our in our six twelve programs, uh, <coughs> uh, most of our faculty members hold advanced degrees, masters, and some doctorates. Uh, all of our teachers are experts in their subject area, either through degree or through extensive study over a series of years. Uh, we're not simply recruiting people straight out of high, straight out of college. Uh, we're looking at people who either have prior teaching experience or have achieved uh, substantial knowledge in their field. And that gives us a great intellectual diversity within our staff that's able to help our students to increase in their knowledge in a variety of different ways. Now, those are all of the things that uh, are, are key to our, our school in terms of their core purposes. They're not necessarily the things that our students really enjoy. Our students enjoy the student life aspects of our school. Now, we have many students who do enjoy the classes uh, that we offer, but it's the other parts of school that are really adjacent to our core purposes that students love. And we have strong components of student life at Thales Academy. The first of those I'll mention is our clubs and extracurriculars. Uh, we have a variety of opportunities for involvement in school life outside of class. We have each campus develops different clubs depending on faculty knowledge and availability and student interest. Uh, but we have a we have a really close knit community that uh, of numerous interests that allows us to compete in a variety of different ways. On this slide, uh, we see an example of our band program. Uh, that's for our pep band that plays for our athletics, uh, some of our basketball games. Uh, on the bottom there, that's our robotics team. Uh, on the and there's also a picture from our our competitive speech and debate team competing at Harvard University this year. And the last picture is from our, that's our Thales Rollsville team and uh, WRAL's Brain Games. Uh, we have a lot of different clubs and activities that students can be involved in. Uh, the full list of opportunities is available on our website at thalesacademy.org. We also have a great uh, set of athletics programs. Those begin in junior high and continue all the way through high school, uh, where we have uh, baseball, soccer, basketball, and track as our primary sports. But then we also have a bunch of, <clears throat> we also have several smaller ones that are offered at uh, individual campuses. Uh, that's the fencing team that's there. Uh, at the bottom, one of the pictures on this slide also includes Becca Poole. She's a member of the class of 2020. Uh, she's our first uh, graduate to go on to sign uh, her. That picture's from her signing of a letter. Uh, she's going to play for her college where she was accepted on a full scholarship to uh, play basketball. So we have a great athletics program that is growing in strength. Several of our teams have won state championships. We are regularly involved in post-conference play. Uh, if, your, if your student is interested in athletics, Thales Academy is a great place to develop those skills. We find that our athletics program is also a great way to advance the character education that is so much a part of what we do here at Thales. It's a great place to show for students to develop the ability to be strong uh, contributors to, uh, to a team, also to develop a strong work ethic. And then once again, to encourage that unfailing integrity that needs to permeate a Thales Academy student's life. We also have several different traditions and community events that uh, are part of drawing our school together. Those begin at each, each July with the beginning of the school year, where we have a school assembly that sets the tone for the coming year. We have pep rallies throughout the year that really celebrate the different achievements that our student body uh, uh, achieves. Uh, we also have different uh, different traditions for different groups. Our junior high students have certain dances that high schoolers are not part of. Our high schoolers have certain dances that the junior high is not part of. Uh, we do try, particularly at those 612 campuses, to create a different experience for our junior high students uh, versus our high school students. We also have a significant study abroad program where we work with a company called EF Tours to create opportunities for students to go see the world. 
Uh, recent trips include trips to Ecuador, trips to Costa, a trip to Costa Rica. Uh, this year, we're looking at a trip to Australia in September and also a trip to Germany uh, sometime uh, later in uh, the next school year. We also have a lot of academic competitions that our students are involved in. Uh, that's the Junior Classical League. That's the Science Olympiad. Uh, that's uh, competitive speech and debate. We have a variety of ways that students come together to compete and to celebrate each other uh, that really work to form us as a school. One of my favorite traditions is involved with celebrating our seniors who uh, are accepted into college, where we all gather together outside of the school and the seniors who have been accepted ring the bell. They explain where they've gotten in and what scholarship amounts they've received. And then we all celebrate them together. Uh, it, it's an important part in the life of our school. Uh, so, now, as one of the uh, distinctions in our school is that we do have, uh, particularly at the, in two of our campuses, we bring together junior high and high school. So we're always on the lookout for ways to differentiate those experiences. So one of the, some of the ways we do that is we celebrate those. Uh, we do junior high awards. We do high school awards. At the end of each year, we have an award ceremony where we recognize the uh, top stu the students who best exemplify all 15 outcomes. And we do a junior high award and we do a high school award for that. Our high school students are also involved with different leadership opportunities that often involve mentoring or coaching their junior high students, which this creates the opportunity for our junior high students to aspire to what they can do when they are in that high school position. Now, I should also mention that school safety is a number one priority for us at Thales Academy. We have a, we have a system in place where all of our doors are locked 24 seven. Uh, all of our visitors must complete a background check before entering. We do frequent safety drills, including uh, fire and code red drills. Our, all of our campuses are monitored throughout the day by security cameras so that administration can constantly be aware of any concerns about school safety. Uh, we believe that safety is the number one priority because Everything else we want to do can't happen in an unsafe environment. So student safety is a huge concern of our administration. Now, Thales Academy is a private independent school, and there are lots of private independent schools. But one of the things that truly sets us apart is our affordability. Uh, we were founded out of a group of parents who were looking for something better than the public school offerings in their area, but something that they could, in fact, afford. So to this day, we have maintained our price point, and in certain schools, we have lower price point options. But in our 612 campuses, the tuition is $6,000 a year. At our K-8 campuses, that include Thales Nightdale, Thales Raleigh, and Thales Waxhaw, that tuition point is $5,500 a year. And we are committed to keeping that price point at that point or lower. Uh, we do not do any additional fundraising. We don't, have, we don't have hidden fees. The price is the price. And we offer a superior or we have we offer, I think, a superior product to many of our counterparts in the private education space. Uh, we also have a $300 full pay discount if tuition is paid by July 20th of 2020. We also have scholarships available and a 10 month payment plan. Uh, if you want more information about our uh, about our payment and tuition information, you can find that on ThalesAcademy.org. Now, our admissions process is very streamlined. Uh, if you are watching this and think, aha, Thales Academy is the place for my student, uh, then please go visit thalesacademy.org where you can begin the application process. Uh, you'll fill out the application. There's then a placement test and then a way to schedule an admissions interview. Our administration teams are very quickly, at, very quick at notifying families of their acceptance, typically within one week. We practice rolling admissions, so on a first come, first ba uh, first come, first serve basis. Uh, we would love to find out if Thales Academy is a great fit for you and your family. So, <coughs> Thales Academy is a growing pri network of private schools that is seeking to take what used to be uh, the elite education that was only available to the top tier of economic families, and we want to make that available to as many families as possible. So if you want to learn more about what Thales Academy is doing and how you can know more about if Thales Academy is in your area, you can find that information at thalesacademy.org. We also maintain an active social media presence on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and you see those links there. Uh, so please do check out what we are offering and see if that's a great fit for you and your family. 
All right, that was a lot of information. Uh, I, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I would love to know what questions you have about this. Uh, if you are still watching, uh, please do put any questions you have in the, uh, uh, in the chat or in the comments, and uh, I'll, I'll speak to those uh, with that. Okay, I think our first question was about scholarships, and uh, we do have a series of scholarships available for students. So that's part of our application process where you would indicate that you are interested in scholarship opportunities, and then our, administra our administrators at different campuses would help you know what would be required to apply for those scholarships. That's a great question. Aha, we've got a question about class sizes. Uh, so class sizes go in a variety of ways, and that fluctuates from year to year, depending on different factors. Uh, but typically, a typical Thales class size in junior high is going to range between 20 and 35 students. And then in high school, a typical class size is going to range from about 18 students to 25 students. Uh, we tend to have slightly smaller class sizes in high school, but that's that changes depending on enrollment and different factors uh, at each campus. Uh, another great question. Uh, we've got another question coming in. How does junior high prepare students for high school? Uh, that's a great question. Part of that preparation is uh, is curricular in nature because <coughs> students in the junior high program are cycling through a lot of the topics that they'll explore at greater length in the high school program, but they're also preparing technologically through getting their iPads at sixth grade and beginning to incorporate that into their rhythms and their studies already. Uh, so there's a lot of preparation that happens, uh, but in junior high is also geared, it's less intense than our high school program uh, because it's looking at the developmental appropriateness of different material for junior high, but also with an eye that students will be moving on to more advanced studies in those areas in high school. What a great question. Uh, oh, wonderful. We got a, a question about our debate program. How do students uh, benefit from the debate program? Uh, the debate program is my baby. I love that program. Uh, so one of the ways that students benefit from that is increased confidence in speaking. Uh, over the years, we've had several students who are noticeably shy who sign up for speech and debate. And they're in a competitive atmosphere where all of the students are incredibly friendly uh, to people who are new to debate but they ha these shy students must speak publicly and it forces them to get out of their shells and out of there and push through that shyness. So that's a, I've had several students who come back saying, this is really what helped me be much more outgoing. Uh, they develop a lot of confidence through that. There's also benefits of travel, of research, of learning about different topics. Uh, this year, debaters have researched topics as uh, uh, varied as nuclear weapons proliferation around the world to uh, whether or not colleges, are a, a four-year bachelor's degree is uh, cost-effective for families. Uh, <coughs> To, as, uh, to whether or not uh, what's the best piece of legislation to pass through Congress this year. Uh, there, there's a lot of different areas and there's immense benefit. Uh, there's also different, different scholarships that are available to students who compete in speech and debate. So there's a lot of benefit. If anybody who has specific questions, please feel free to reach out to me at josh.herring at thalesacademy.org. I'd love to speak with anybody who wants to know more about our speech and debate program. Aha. We've got a question about homework and how much homework there is. So uh, there is always a uh, tension for us as faculty where we are trying to accomplish the curriculum, uh, but we also recognize that we are uh, that it's very easy to overburden students. So uh, we have a homework policy in place that teachers have to follow that tells us how many pages of reading we can assign. Uh, typically, and then uh, we also provide students time during the day to work on uh, their homework for particular classes. Uh, and there, are, there is an option uh, as a junior high student to take a class called curriculum assistance where they then can, that's literally a structured homework bell that is monitored by a teacher. In high school, students take a class called Flex that they either can use for online blended learning opportunities where they are, perhaps they've decided they want to take uh, AP composition and language when well, they do that during Flex, or uh, they could just choose to use Flex as a homework bell. Perhaps that year they've start, the high schooler has taken on a job at Chick-fil-A or uh, at a car wash or something, and they want to get all their homework done during the school day. Flex becomes their opportunity to do that. 
So we are very, as teachers, teachers are very cognizant of the ability to overwhelm students with homework, but we also we are committed to uh, only assigning substantive homework that continues to advance students' education. So I think our, our next question is uh, looking at carpool. How does carpool work as well as before and after after care? Uh, so we have a before school and after school care program where that parents can sign up for. Uh, before school care is that begins at uh, 7 a.m. Uh, students could be dropped off as early as 7 a.m. Uh, that may be 7.15. I think that's actually 7.15 a.m. Uh, <coughs> And that, that's going to vary depending on each campus. Uh, but then our aftercare program is, that's, uh, that's handled by the YMCA. Uh, they run our after school program. Carpool works. Uh, each campus has a particular carpool routine where uh, through following the procedure at that campus, parents will go through carpool. They'll drop their students off in the morning and then they'll follow the procedure to exit the parking lot. Uh, and then in the afternoon, they will come pick their students up. Uh, that, that, that's a campus-specific procedure based on the specific layout of the parking lot at each campus. Our next question is, uh, how do students transferring from other schools adapt to the curriculum? That's a great question. Uh, we, the, we have that happen every year. Uh, what we find is that typically it depends a lot on the rigor of the school that students came from. If they are used to not having to do schoolwork, uh, it often becomes an adjustment period where uh, students discover that to keep up with a rigorous curriculum, they do have to do they do have to put in work. Uh, that 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 is a reality of our school. What we often find is that students uh, then discover that they, uh, if they come from that background, they usually discover over the course of their first year at Thales that they are much more proud of themselves for working hard and succeeding uh, than, than previously. Uh, but if students are coming to us from an equally rigorous program, uh, they really kind of fit right in. Each of our classes are structured so that we're simultaneously hoping to hit two different groups. Uh, we want to we want to make sure to give the students who have been with Thales all the way through plenty of new material. But we're also always aware that we always have students who are jumping in brand new. Uh, so we're wanting to also treat that class as accessible to students who have not taken the previous course the previous year in that sequence. Oh, great question. Uh, so the question is, what STEM opportunities are available in junior high? Uh, we have a junior high class called Exploratory STEM that is currently available for eighth grade uh, and may be available for lower grades uh, along the way. Excuse me. That class is uh, a uh, it allows students to have a combined kind of applied physics course, uh, but with also looking at different kinds of STEM issues that are very similar to what they would explore in ninth grade LIT. Uh, so that's a very popular elective choice where students often uh, they want they think they're engineering bound and they want to explore that, and it's the perfect class for that. Our next question. Ah. Extracurricular options. Uh, so we have a lot of extracurriculars. Uh, I'll, I'll mention a few of those. Uh, so one of those is our Junior Classical League. Uh, that's a that's a club that is all about learning more about ancient Greece and Rome. Uh, we also have, and then the, that's a competitive extracurricular. Uh, we also have Science Olympiad, which is a competition geared elective as or extracurricular as well. Uh, where that extracurricular is all about uh, doing different scientific contests and students are aimed at that's regional, that's local, and that's national as well. <coughs> uh, we have uh, speech and debate as an extracurricular option for our middle school students as well where they'll develop speeches or they'll research debate cases and then practice those and then go to competition. Uh, we also have ex different extracurriculars that are not so much competition based. Uh, we have an art club. We have uh, chorus and band are different extracurriculars. We have pep band uh, as well. Uh, I think Thales Apex has a fencing team that is a, counts as an extracurricular. Uh, we have a now the extracurriculars those change from year to year depending on faculty interest and student interest. Uh, we have had extracurriculars as varied as the Cat Club, the Knitting Club, the Harry Potter Club. Uh, there was a there was an attempt at one point to get a Dungeons and Dragons club started at Thales Rollsville that didn't go very far, but I believe that that does exist over at uh, Thales Apex. So each year, uh, students are try are recruiting faculty to say, "Hey, I want this club," and if they can get a faculty sponsor, we work very hard to try and make that an existing opportunity. Uh, we are exploring other options for next year to increase the number of extracurricular activities that students have access to. Great question. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here on this uh, Facebook Live cast. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I, I do love what we do here at Thales Academy. You can find everything that uh, I've mentioned uh, in this presentation on our website, as well as a lot of other information, uh, as well as contact information for each of our campuses. So we have campuses, uh, seven campuses in the Triangle area, and also Thales Waxhaw. We're also opening campuses in Glen Allen, Virginia, and in Franklin, Tennessee. So if you want more information about Thales Academy, please check out our website at thalesacademy.org. My name is Josh Herring. I appreciate you joining us for today, and I hope to see you at a school tour soon.